Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also trans transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Colossians 2 and 8. This is Paul. And he says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Paul writes again in Thessalonians, the second book of Thessalonians 2 and 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or epistle, 3 and 6 of the same book. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which ye received of us. I want to talk to you for a few minutes this evening on text and tradition. Text and tradition. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are unchanging. And tonight, you have brought our family together. We've shouted, we've worshipped, we've celebrated with Sister Dilks, Brother Larry, God, for what you've done in their lives. And we're so excited to watch you continually work in the lives of these that you have brought and in our lives as a collective body. I pray now, Lord, that you would speak to us through me. I'm ready to receive what you have. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And as one, we say in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Thank you. As growing up, there were just some things we did. And there were some things we didn't do. Because they were sin and they weren't allowed in our home. I, uh, I remember one time, I was about 10 years old. And the home we, I grew up in, it was right outside of Amsterdam. And uh, my friends, of course, there was no youth group. It was just our family. And my friends were all, of course, uh, not saved. And I'd play outside with my dad, let me play outside with them. And we were really into marbles. We had marbles, you know, and it was a great thing. And um, one day it was, I don't know why, but we were inside at, around the dinner table uh, in our, our family room. It was a three-story home, very narrow. And upstairs was like a balcony over the the uh, living room areas where my dad's office was and we were down there me and my buddies and we were counting these marbles or something one of them got loose started rolling rolled off the table fell on mom's floor and I thought it had broke the floor and I I let out a word that I didn't know was a curse word I promise I didn't know it was a curse word and I said it good and loud well next thing you know my daddy was up there he came down he knew his face was red. He had a stick in his hand. He came down them stairs. They were open stairs. You could see him. My, my friends didn't even have to be told to leave. They ran. My backside went from white to bright red. Bam. I mean, he, he whooped me. I mean, he told, now your yay is to be yay. Your nay is nay. We don't use words like that. That's how it was in my house. I mean, we didn't, you didn't even come close to a curse word. You didn't. Uh, oh my gosh, I'd get whipped for that. Golly, geez, I, I still struggle. I don't say that stuff. It's too close to Jesus. Oh my heavens, I said one time. Oh son, we don't swear by the heavens. You know, was, okay, got it. And uh, I remember one time, Dad and Mom were out teaching a Bible study, and we were we had moved now. We were living in the south of the country. I'm a teenager, 15, 16 years of age, and uh, so Anna and I both were teenagers, and. We were home alone, and at this point, we had uh, switched into a homeschool that was through uh, the video, a Becca video. So we had these, uh, we had a VS, uh, VCR. Almost forgot how to say it. <laughs> these kids don't even know what a VCR is. They'll never know that waiting to eject. You know. And they were gone, and I'd procured a. Uh, video rental card from the store which was highly forbidden in our home and uh, so Anna forced me to go down <laughs> and rent, rent some movies now these weren't the vid, vid angel production chosen 
So Anna and I, we locked the front door, left the key in the door because the key was in the door and they put their key in the door, they couldn't get in. <laughs> you don't want to mess with me. We started watching whatever she had forced me into Brenton. They came home early. Boy, we, I grabbed that. We took like 45 minutes to get that thing out of there. Just, come on, come on. <laughs> Finally, I got it out, man. I threw it in my closet, ran down them stairs, opened the door. I think she went down, and I threw the, the video in the closet. So, whew, say, thank God. You know, all was well. I remember uh, 2 o'clock in the morning or middle of the night, I'm laying in bed. Dad shakes me, and he's been crying, and my dad's not a crier. Worry on his face. He said, what were y'all doing while I was gone? I said, nothing. <laughs> you mean nothing. He said, I sense evil. He's like, were you looking at a magazine? Or pornography? Oh, no. Oh, man, I'm like, no, that's real bad. You, you'll be glad when you know what I was doing. <laughs> so I, I said, no, Dad. We, I said, the woman that... <laughs> The woman that thou hast put me with in this same house, she forced me. He said, well, go get it. So I went and got it. He said, let's watch it together. Oh, God, it's like watching a movie with Jesus. We got three minutes in. He, they started out cursing. Then they got about, he just sat there. Boy, that face started turning. I could see it. Then they started kissing. And he went on past kissing. He walked up. He pushed, ejected harder than I'd ever seen. Eject button be pushed. It didn't need to be pushed. It could have probably just come out with the spirit of God's anger. He said, what, where's that card? How did you get this? I said, well, I got a card. He said, give me a card. Went downstairs. He got a lighter. He lit it all on fire. He said, the Bible says we set no evil thing before our eyes. And in this home, we will not do that. That is a sin before God. You have caused an abomination to come into this house, son. He, uh, he didn't whoop me that time, but he grounded me from all things fun. <laughs> His sin wasn't permitted in our home. It was part of it. You were disciplined. You were disciplined strictly if you sinned. I remember telling a lie one time. And I think it's the last time I did. Because it didn't end well with me if you told a lie. I mean, the Bible says don't, we did it. If the Bible said do it, we did it. If the pastor said don't, we did it. And the pastor said do it, we did it. That's just how we live. And it was enforced in what made our home a safe place. I was frustrated as a child, but I celebrated as an adult. However, there were some other things that could get you just in as much trouble that had nowhere, nothing in the Bible. They were just tuttle traditions. In the summer at night in Holland, it stays light, very late, because we're in the, up further north. And so my, my parents would let me play outside. I mean, we had a community. It was tons of kids. It was lots of fun. But, man, when those street lights came on, you had five minutes. Didn't matter where you were in the neighborhood. You had five minutes, and those street lights came on. It's like they... I don't know, like, I think my dad and the, the power company were in cahoots with each other. Like, he knew exactly when... And so if I was a little late, whew, pow, you'd be in trouble. It's, and uh, dinner time, every evening, we had to be at the table at this time. That's just how I was raised. And if you didn't, you got in trouble. Uh, at dinner, after dinner, you didn't just run out and play. You had chores. And I, I had to do the, the whatever was harder I had to do. And Anna got the easy job. She basically didn't have chores. Talking with mouth full of food would get you in trouble at our table. At Christmas time, on Christmas Day, don't even ask to play outside. We're going to spend time with our family today. And you don't open a present until we've read the Christmas story together as a family. That's the tradition. And I, uh, I'm thankful that these things were enforced. With this, the, I mean, my dad was as passionate about you being at that dinner table, not, not talking with your mouth full of food as he was about me watching an R-rated movie. It was intense. And I remember those lights coming on, and it'd still be light outside. The lights are on, and I'd say, Dad, you know, Dad, uh, Alexander and Brenda and Paul, I said, they're still all out there playing and having a good time. He said, Matt, you're not Brenda, Alexander, or Paul. Your name's Matthew Tuttle, and we come in when the lights come on. 
tell you, as pastor of, of the church, there's some things that we preach and I believe, and we will do them because they are text. That means they are in this book. Those are things that are incompromisable, that we're going to preach with passion, vigor. We're going to stand on. I mean, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's non-negotiable. And Well, I don't agree. It doesn't matter. That's non-negotiable. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's in the Bible. And so we're going to preach it. New birth, John chapter 3. You must be born again of water and spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. That's a non-negotiable. That is text. I got black and white or red and white. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter uh, 2, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 8, uh, Acts chapter 3. We're going to leap in church because it's in the Bible. We're going to clap our hands and shout because Psalms 47 tells us to. Amen? It's just text. It's 1 Corinthians 11 that says that a man shouldn't have long hair and a woman shouldn't trim or cut hers. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 makes it clear that a man shouldn't wear a woman's clothing and a woman shouldn't wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Exodus 33 tells us that we shouldn't have jewelry. 1 Timothy tells us to stay away from costly array. These are Bible verses. Uh, 2 Kings and Proverbs tells us that the painting of the face is connected with a lifestyle that we're not going to be connected with. Uh, Psalms 101 says don't watch evil things. So that's why pastor gets up and says, the Bible says you shouldn't be watching movies that have, come on, evil things in them. Matt 5, 28 says don't look at pornography. 1 Corinthians 6, don't have sex before marriage or with anyone outside of your marriage. So we're going to preach that you got to stay faithful to your wife and you got to stay, well, down the world now, they're all sleeping together. I, I don't care. The rule is uh, we don't have sex before marriage. It's in the book. It's in the book. Well, that's old fashioned. It's in the book. It's the law of the land. It's the way it is. Mark 12 says, love your neighbors. So we're going to love neighbors even though they're hard to love. Sister Dilk's getting, getting uh, the victory. Amen. That's, you know why she is? Because of God's word. These laws are good for us. James 1 says, care for the fatherless. So when we see someone that's an orphan, we are to take care of them as we do. James 1, care for the widow. Jesus in Luke 10 says, take care of those that have been hurt. Those are in the text. Those are just non-negotiables. That's not something that it's up for debate. You have to do them in order to be saved. Amen? However, what concerns me, and I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm pastor, and that's the bummer. I wish I was just the evangelist tonight. But I've got to express the concerns that I see is creeping into Christianity. I'm not so worried about the sinners that are coming our way or those from the denominal world or non-denominal world that's coming towards truth. But I'm worried that some part of those, of us, that have once been with us, they start using enticing words. Start using words that are so rich and they've got philosophy that's, well, that kind of makes some sense. And yeah, it's wise in the eyes of man. But Paul said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. He said, be careful with the words because words do matter. I mean, these words, you know, old-fashioned pintas, you know, or spit slingers or screamers or another word that is majorly under attack in Pentecost is the word tradition it's a word that's being used to excuse and eliminate uh, long standing valuable practices that have been held within the church oh that's just tradition and it's become a negative word but I want to remind this church tonight as your pastor that the word tradition is not a Christian curse word Traditions aren't bad. Now, it's like anything. It depends on how the tradition's used. And Jesus, we read some texts tonight. Some were positive for, some were negative against. And so we have to realize that the tradition that changes the commandment is wrong. The tradition that tries to supersede the commandment is wrong. That's why Jesus in Matthew 15, 3, as we read in our opening text, he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your trans tradition? He said, you are using tradition to break the commandment, the text. 
What he's saying, so here's the thing. The commandment always supersedes. So no matter what your tradition, if your tradition says that you should be baptized in the Trinity, that tradition is wrong and the commandment is right. Does that make sense? If your tradition says, shake the preacher's hand, confess your faults to him, then your tradition is wrong and the commandment is that we confess our faults directly to Jesus Christ. Amen? So if the, if the tradition tries to supersede or change the commandment of God, then, ladies and gentlemen, it's wrong. It's wrong. Amen? And so we have to just, just be, be careful and realize that, that there are some traditions that, yeah, they put above the commandments of God. However, that doesn't mean that all traditions are bad. I said that doesn't mean that all traditions should be thrown out just because. And so you've got this attitude now that says, well, well my God, where's that at in the Bible line for line? Okay? And so that's just the way it was. In our home, growing, growing up, we're eating at the table. It was a must. It's, it's not in the Bible. Thou shalt eat at the table. No, but it's where Dad imparted wisdom into the kids. And now I look back and I'm like, that tradition really makes sense. And I know times have changed and, and people working and that's not possible. How many of you grew up just eating around the dinner table with your family? How many of you cherish that now? As a, as an, oh, look, keep same hands are up. Thank God for it, amen? Yeah, it's not in the Bible, but it was a really good tradition. Thank God for it, amen? Being inside when the lights come on, that is not in Scripture. They didn't even have electricity in the Bible. But my dad established a tradition and compared to where the children are that didn't have that tradition, I'm thankful that we had the tradition that we didn't stay out at night because the things that happened when the lights came on about 10 minutes after are the things you don't want your kids involved in. Well, it's not in the Bible, Dad. I know it's just one of our traditions. And it's a good one. I said, and it's a good one. What's the meaning of the word tradition? I've got the, the, just the definition off... Uh, the, out of the dictionary. Here's a noun. It's a noun. The, tradi uh, the transmission of a custom or beliefs from generation to generation or the fact of being passed on this way. A long established custom or belief that has been passed on from generation to generation to another. It's a plural and the traditions continue. The plural noun, I think I've got more definition. Do I not? Okay, I might not have got it to the screens, but here it's, it's to, oh, oh, you missed a word. Oh, here it is, right here. The transmission of customs, beliefs, generation, generation, or the fact of being passed on its way, historical conviction, unwritten laws, oral history, heritage. When you look up in the dictionary the word tradition, one of the words you're going to get is heritage. Now, your dictionary will also give the theological meaning. It's a doctrine believed to have divine authority, uh, though not in scriptures. Uh, in Christianity, doctrine not explicitly explicitly in the Bible, but held to derive from oral teachings of Jesus and the apostles. So one of the meanings and one of the words we can use for tradition is heritage. Now when the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, God is speaking to them, and here's what he promises them in Exodus chapter 6 and 6, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, I will rid you of their bondage, and will redeem you from, uh, with a stretched out arm and with great judgment, and I will take you to me for a people, and will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians." Hallelujah. And I will bring you out into a land concerning that which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Uh, and I will give it to you for a heritage. He says part of being part of the people of God is there's going to be some traditions. Just like your family has a Christmas tradition, just like your family has some traditions, guess what? This family has some traditions. And they're good. I said, and they're good. I know they're under attack right now, but they're good. And I'm thanking God for them. I'm going to give you a heritage. So yes, Jesus says, be careful that your traditions don't supersede the commandments. But Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold. He didn't say let them go. He said hold tradition, the oral things that were given to you uh, that were through the word uh, or the epistle, 3 and 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the same of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which you received. He didn't say the doctrine. He didn't say the commandments. He said you got to separate yourself from people that no longer cherish traditions. 
This is old fashioned. Call it what you want, it's the Bible. The Bible's an old book, so every once in a while it's going to sound old fashioned. Come on, somebody. I mean, my, my, my neighbor boy, Robert Yan was his name, Robert Yan. And he called his parents by their first name. I thought, that's cool. I went in, I said, hey, Mike. Ooh. I ain't Mike, I'm dad. And I will be referred to as dad. And when you say yes, it will be followed by sir. Let me just say this, Eastgate. My goal and mission is not to be the coolest and the hippest church in town. I'm not out to see to be the coolest pastor with skinny jeans, ripped hells, and you know, flashing whatever latest tennis shoe. It ain't my it ain't the game. I ain't in for that. I'm thankful for the traditions. I I love them. Well, I don't. That's fine. I do, and they're important, and they're valuable. It's what makes us a family. It's our heritage. So we have to. We have to believe. Well, some of people, you know, the phrase I'm hearing a lot right now is, well, they believe the doctrine, you know. They just don't believe in holiness. Now, hold on. Holiness is part of the doctrine. If they say, if someone tells you, well, yeah, they believe the doctrine, just not holiness, here's the, here's the truth. They don't believe the doctrine. And holiness is holiness once it becomes defined. You don't get in trouble saying God's holy and I believe in holiness. You get in trouble when you start defining holiness using scripture and traditions. And that's my job, not yours. Please don't do my job. It hurts me when you do my job. My job is to be the one to define and to enforce those. I, I get the nice car in the parking spot. Stay out of my spot. Look at your name and say, stay out of pastor's spot. Let pastor be pastor. He might not be good at it, but at least he's the one having to do it. All right? And that's my job. My job is to, to the job of a pastor is to build and to hold on to tr the traditions that were handed to us, whether by word or deed. Building fences around things that are precious to us or building fences around things that are dangerous to us. That's my duty. That's what I'm called to do. God is speaking to Moses on the mountain in Exodus 19 and 10. And he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Moses is up on the mountain. And he's talking to God in verse 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the side of the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about. Okay, so who's to set the boundaries? Moses, right? He said, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye you go not up into the mountain or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall what? Okay, he said, You go down and you draw out where the mountain uh, is. Uh, and if they touch the mountain uh, and, and they go across that line, they're to die. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mountain. God did not tell Moses where to build the boundary. He just said, build the boundary. And if you build the boundary, I'll honor the boundary. Now look, where did Moses build the boundary? I don't know. At what point in that, is there, here's this huge mountain. Let's say this is the mountain in the middle of the platform here. And he's like, okay, if, these, if the people get on this mountain or touch this mountain, they are going to die. Now, I, I don't know. Hey, go out. Here, let's do this real quick. Jacob, go out. Go out real quick. Go out. I need another young man. So, you, you know, the cool generation. Preston, he's cool. Isn't he cool? A radio announcer. Go ahead. Missionary. I love him. All right, go quick, quick, quick. And so now here's this mountain. And God said, I'm going to come down. And he said, Moses, I need you. And if anybody touches it, he said, they're going to die. Right? He said, so what I want you to do is build a barrier around it. Uh, so I don't understand why we got these walls and these barriers. I'll tell you why. Because if you, there's some things that will cost you your eternity uh, if, if you get close to them. That's why. And so, so let's see. Let's see where Pastor, let's start with Pastor uh, Jacob. Pastor Jacob. Pastor Jacob. Come on. I want you to, we're, you're, this is the mountain. You kind of heard that, right? I need you to determine where you feel like the fence or the boundary should be established in this deal. 
You feel like that's a good spot? All right, you sure they can't get close there? They can't touch the mountain, right? Yeah, there's a wall. That's okay, okay, good, good. All right, go get, go get Pastor Preston real quick. All right, don't tell him I said Pastor Preston. He'll be coming after my spot. Okay, now, Preston, come on. This mountain is the mountain. You kind of heard that part. If the people touch it, they're going to die. You are the pastor, and you are commanded by God to build a wall around it. Where do you think that wall should be built? Where do you, you build your wall? You go away. You go away. Go away. Where? You sure? You feel like that's a good spot? Well, that's a lot further away than him, other pastor. Well, that pastor allows this, and this pastor don't allow that, and this pastor, here's the deal. God said, whatever the man says, that's what I'm going to honor. And there's going to be some, and their line's here. And there's going to be some, and their line's here. And there's going to be some, and their line's here. But whatever the line is, that's what we honor. Why? Because we're a family. And Come on. And so God... Pastor, thank you for building the fence. Just build the fence. If you'll build it, I know, come on. And here's the challenge of being a pastor. You want to know the challenge? Some of you think I build the fence out too far. And some of you think I build the fence too close. And if I listened to all y'all, I'd be in a continual state of misery. So I don't build the fence based on what you think. I get down in prayer and I try to be balanced. And I try to draw the line in a place where I know we're in 2022 and we got to have a cell phone and internet and there's vid angel and I, I can't get up and preach against fresh air. But I got friends, they build their fences out here. I've got friends that build their fences out here. I'm just trying to build my fence right about here. Why? Because I don't want y'all to die. Just let me build the fence. And if you don't want to, if you think it's a little too close, then live out here. You're fine and dandy. And if you think it's a little too far, don't touch it. Whatever you do, just don't touch it. I'm not building it because I don't love you. I'm not building it because I hate you. I'm building it because God told me to build it. It's my job. I love you so much. I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to be hurt. I want you to be safe and saved. And I want our kids to get to heaven. That's why we build the fence. It's, to, it's so that we can have, have safety in our home. So that's why I get up and I say, hey guys, let's not watch things that are ungodly. I don't know why I preach up that guy. Just fence. Don't touch it. Be careful having your kids in competitive sports. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch it. It'd be better just to listen. Or you can touch it and find out if God's word is true. Come on, somebody. Why? Something in my Holy Ghost tells me. You just need not to do it. Why did you build it there, Moses? You could have built it here. I don't know, Aaron. I just feel like this is where it needs to be built. So that's where we're going to build it. I just feel like it's, I said, I trust God's word and I trust God's man. Come on, somebody. I trust God's word and I trust God's man. I mean, what if, what if, what if Adam and Eve would have exercised tradition? What if the commandment was don't touch, because the commandment was don't eat of it. But what if they would have had a tradition that guarded the commandment? Come on, somebody. And the tradition said, here's what we do at our home. We don't even touch four trees out. Does that make sense? What if Adam would have said, we are not going to eat that tree, and you're not going to eat of the apple tree next to it, the orange tree, the fig tree, or the pear tree. You can eat four trees out. Why four trees out? Because I just don't want you to get so close to that. If he would have had some traditions in his family, we wouldn't be in sin today. Because a tradition is to support the commandment. It's not the commandment. It's what helps uphold the commandment. It's what helps secure the commandment. It's not the commandment. But it is honored by God as one of them. The wall is not the mountain. But if you touch the wall, you die. Because he said it's what upholds and keeps safe the community of believers. So ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, that's why you need a holiness church. You need a church that loves the commandments but also cherishes the traditions. Hallelujah. Don't touch it, he said. 
Hallelujah. And so he says in, in, in Numbers chapter 15 and 37, here's the Bible. Uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh, Can you read it? My voice is going shot. Don't, aren't we glad to have great evangelist John Welch? Y'all are like, My God, why don't you have him preach? Can you get that mic? Didn't he preach good Sunday morning? Someone said, Oh, Pastor. I wonder if pastor's going to be upset. We had such good church without him. Hey, y'all just have great church without me every time. That's the highest compliment you could give a pastor. Amen. When I'm not here, y'all shout, hoop, holler. Amen. Go ahead. What, did you get him a mic? Get him a mic. But woo, we're getting to preach together, man. No, this ain't, this ain't included in your pay, though. Yeah, you ain't getting paid for it. You know them evangelists are. 838, all right, go. Speaking to the children of Israel and bid them that they... Now, John, may... I need you to build super fast. Go fast, like your tuttle. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they good, make them fringes in the borders of their garments and throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. He said, I want you to put a ribbon of blue around the fringe of the garment. Keep going. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember. And the fringe is for who? For you. You. He said, I want you to put a fringe for you. This is for you. Keep going. And remember all so the So that you can remember. The tradition's going to connect you to remember the commandment. Continue. Of the Lord and do them that you may seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes, but after that you use and to go a whoring. Keep going. That for, you keep, may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. He said, I know they're going to ask why. And so I, you do it to be holy unto God. Here's, keep going. And I'm the Lord your God. And which, I'm God. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. And I'm the Lord your God. He kept, here's why you're going to do it. Because I'm your God. I'm your God. I'm your God. He said, so I'm going to put something uh, on you. Uh, you're going to wear this. Uh, and this right here is going to be a reminder to you that every time you look down uh, and you see that blue, uh, you'll remember the bondage. Uh, you'll remember the chains. Uh, oh, it's just a piece of garment. It's not just a piece of garment. It's not just a dress. You're not, let me tell you, you're not wearing dresses and skirts and wearing pants uh, so that just so the world can see you as some holy roller. You're doing it uh, to remind you of the Lord your God to remind you of who you were to remind you of where you came from we, that's why we're holy that's why we're separate that's why we've got some traditions uh, to remind us of how good the God we serve is thank God for the traditions of God thank God for the text and thank God for the traditions uh, he said, I don't want you to ever forget. I don't want you to ever forget that he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Oh, it's just a stupid piece of cloth. It's just a dress. It's just, oh, grab that flag. Grab it. That's just a piece of cloth. I said, that's just a piece of cloth. All right. But if that light ain't shining on it at night out in that front yard, my phone blows up. And if it drags the ground, y'all will bum rush this and punch me in the face. How would you feel if right now I started ripping it? You try to tell this veteran it's just a piece of cloth. You try to tell brother, try to go ahead and tell brother Goss in a fo who's been in a foxhole on foreign lands that that's just a piece of cloth of no value, that it doesn't have anything, uh, it's not worth anything, that that's just a piece of cloth and it's invaluable. And, and you know what? It's just a bunch of red, white, and blue and stupid stars. And no, 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 no. That's not just a piece of cloth. That represents freedom. That represents America. You know what long hair on a woman represents? It represents it's freedom and it represents the church you know what our traditions represent our commandments thank God for the church I'm going to begin I pledge allegiance y'all let's do it right now I pledge I pledge stop look where your hand's at where's your hand You remember we had a president one time didn't put his hand on his heart? Everybody had a, oh man, they had a heart attack. Ooh, matter of fact, if I don't put my hand on my heart, we start singing the national anthem, y'all leaving church. You're changing churches. If pastor's like, 
Oh, say can I pledge allegiance? I'm finding me a church where this preacher, you know, he appreciates. He appreciates this nation. But I, y'all saw me texting up on that platform. You knew I text. I text a police officer. I text Rod Carroll and I text Josh. I said, "Is it a law that I put my hand on the heart? Is it? Am I going to go to jail if I do not put my hand on my heart during the national anthem?" You know what they text back? No. It's not a law. Josh texts back. It was perfect. Couldn't have planned it better. He said, it's a custom. Hold on. You'll get ticked off when somebody doesn't put their hand on their heart for a flag. But when a preacher gets up and starts letting down on traditions... Yeah, that's great. You know, it's all pointless anyway. Come on, somebody. I expect a terrorist or somebody in Holland not to put their hands on their heart. But an American? I expect a sinner not to love the traditions. But an apostolic? Born again? If you're new to this and you don't understand it and you're frustrated, that's fine. You don't have to. But if you're apostolic, if you're multi-generational, if you've been raised in this, you ought to look at anybody trying to pull somebody's hand off their heart, trying to put, come on somebody, trying to change the way that things need to be and say, I'm... So excuse me if I get a little bit frustrated at the politician whose hand isn't on his heart. Excuse me if I get a little upset with somebody that won't salute. How do you feel? How, what emotion do you have when the national anthem's going on and they're doing this? Talk to me, talk to me. Happy warm fuzzies? Anger, frustration. Why? Come on. That's what you should feel when the traditions are taken away out of the church. Excuse me if it upsets me a little bit when I see a preacher get up and say, shorts don't matter. It don't matter anymore. Dressing up and living right, it it don't matter anymore. Go ahead and go to ball game. That's why we don't go to movie houses. Why? Because it's a tradition. We've been doing it that way for years. It got us this far, and it's going to take us home. You know why you put your hand on that heart? Tradition. You know why you salute that flag? Tradition and customs. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. It's who we are. Oh, it's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It's not mandatory. It's not law. But the minute they stop doing this, it's what guards our Constitution. It's the respect for this. And that's why you get upset. Because you know the kneeling doesn't stop with the kneeling. It ain't just about kneeling to the neck. It's about rebellion against the core principles. And this isn't it funny? The same people kneeling to our flag want to teach critical race theory to our children. Isn't it funny that the people that won't salute our flag are the same ones doing promoting transgenderism into our elementary schools? Isn't it why? Because it doesn't just stop. It doesn't stop with just not saluting or not putting your hand. It moves on because when you take the tradition that upholds our constitution away, you you have removed all that protects our love for this great fl- this great piece of cloth that isn't just a piece of cloth. Uh, hey baby, you wear that garment. Uh, you go out into the world. Uh, you get that hair ready. Uh, you dress holy and righteous. Uh, and you remember, uh, I'm honoring the flag. Uh, I'm honoring the commandments. Uh, I'm keeping hold of the truth. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for the tradition. Well, I don't know, you know. Sunday nights, it's a bit much. So sorry, Sister Katie. Sunday night's going to keep going. Well, down the street, they don't do it. We ain't down the street. We ain't that family. We ain't Alexander Brenda. We're Eastgate. And here, we have Sunday night church. Why? Because Bishop, for 35 years, had Sunday night church. Matter of fact, let's do this. How many got the Holy Ghost on a Sunday night? Look across, look across. How many have ever been free, uh, healed on a Sunday night? 
Holy Ghost people keep your hands up been healed how many of you ever got blessed on a Sunday night and they wanting to take your blessing them wanting to tell you come on because they don't want to go to work on Sunday night get me in the pulpit get me in the church house yes it's more work but it's part of my job it's part you're saying well are you saying that they're going to hell I'm not saying anybody's going to hell I'm saying the tradition at Eastgate United Pentecostal Church uh, is that we put our hands on the heart uh, we have Sunday night church uh, that's what we do oh, that's how I was raised I was raised, the priest wore the garment to his ankles. We don't wear shorts. That's how I was raised. Worked pretty good. Bishop, is that how you were raised? Is that what you preached? Well, if you preached it, I'm not changing it. Where's that in the Bible? I'll tell you where it is. I just read you two verses where it's in the Bible. Hold fast to what he told me. Why do we do that? I'm going to tell you there's a reason. Because I've been handed this thing and I love it. I love it. I love what the tradition protects. And I'm into the place now where I, the older I get, I love the traditions. I like that we put our hands on our hearts when we pledge allegiance. I like that, that we, our women look like women. I like that blonde hairs are blonde hairs and you don't have to wonder. I'm on somebody. I like it. If you're new here, you're not going to like it just yet. But when you grow up, oh, can I get a grown up? Can I get a grown up? I said, can I get a grown up that's like, yeah. I like sitting around the dinner table at six o'clock with the family. Didn't like it when I was a kid. I like that there's some standards and some separation. Didn't like it when I was a kid, but thank God that daddy didn't change the rules to try to be cool. The mission isn't to be cool. The mission is to be saved. Let's go to heaven. Well, preacher, I'm almost done. The preacher, the psychologists say, you know, that, you know, aisle running, that's not in the Bible. No, aisle running's not in the Bible. Aisle running runs in the family. <laughs> Let's just do it. Why are you running, Ryan? Why are we running, Ryan? I'll tell you why we're running, because it runs in the family. Well, this is just part of our family tradition. On Sunday nights, we come in and run the aisles. Why are we running? Tradition. You know what else we're guarding while we're running? We're guarding the dance. We're guarding the hand clap. We're guarding the shout. We're guarding the hallelujah. We're guarding the moves of the Holy Ghost that sweep in so run on Eastgate and don't ever stop running. Shout on Eastgate and don't ever stop shouting. Dance on Eastgate and don't let anybody steal your dance. It's who we are. It's what makes us the people of God. I got a word from you, for you. Paul, 1 Corinthians 11 and 16. But if any man seems to be contentious, we don't have any other kind of way. We're not going to debate it. This is the way it's going to be. It's going to be this way. We're going to be one God. We're going to be Jesus' name. We're going to be tongue talking. We're going to be holiness. We're going to be come aisle running, pew jumping. And if you don't like it, you'll get cancer. You'll get in hell. You'll go through divorce and you'll come back and you'll be thankful. Yeah. Jacob's wrestling. I'm almost done. Jacob's wrestling. No, it'd be all right if it wasn't almost done. Thirty-two of twenty-five, and the Bible says that he saw he couldn't prevail against him. He's wrestling with the angel of the Lord. He's not wrestling with the Lord. The Bible says he, God, the angel realized he ain't gonna let me go. What he do? He reached in the hollow of his thigh, 
touches him. Man, I didn't know I was that powerful. I actually did. I, I just knocked a Marine on the ground, brother. Uh, gosh, I apologize for that. The Lord's army is still the best branch. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, Mr. Marine, you can't compete with the Lord's army. You know what happened? You know what happened in his body that made him limp for the rest of his life? The sinew in his thigh. What did it do? Somebody said it. Shrank. That means after the touch of the Lord, there were restrictions. And these restrictions changed the way he behaved. I'll say it again. Restrictions aren't bad if they're directly linked to God's hand. Let me say it again. The restriction is good if it's linked to God's hand. Why do you why do y'all why do y'all do that? You should have been there. Come see. When the wind of the Holy Ghost blow. Why, why do you dress like that? Well, once we were in Egypt. Why you got that blue ribbon? Uh, why, why you got that blue ribbon around your long pants? I'll, I'll tell you why. I was addicted to all kinds of garbage. I couldn't sleep at night. I was in bondage. And I came out. So why do you have to wear that? I wear it to remember. To remember how good he is. To remember how he, he brought me out of the miry clay. I love... Oh, you don't you don't need that. You don't you don't you should give it up. It looks stupid. You don't look you like no, don't you take it. I don't ever want to forget that should be the attitude you have towards the tradition. Is nobody can take it. You don't make it easier on me, preacher. I need to remember. Don't try to take away the standard. I need to remember how good God has been to my family. Sin you shrinks, his body's restricted. He walks different now. He's different. Israel is different. Verse 32, I'll end here. Therefore, the children of these are his children. Eat not of the sinew which shrank. Where does it say that in the Bible? God never commanded it. They just said, Daddy. Your restrictions are going to be my restrictions. What's tightened up in your life will have no part of my life. If God felt like it needed to be changed in you, come on, somebody. I don't need you to open up the thou shalt not eat of the sinew. I, thou shalt not put heroin needles in thine eyeballs. Thou shalt not. No. Daddy, you had a move of God, and it changed your life. I want what you've got. I want what you've got. What do I? Give me that blue ribbon. And I want it around me. I want to walk like you walk. I want. It. And if I can't walk exactly because I didn't go what you went through, uh, then I won't eat of the thing that's restricted of you because I just want to give up something. That's the attitude of holiness. That's the attitude that says, just give me something to give. Give me something to give. Give me something to be for Christ. I don't need another commandment. I have love for God. If you're a visitor here and you look at our standards, the way we dress, we're not doing this to be weird. And we're doing it just to remember where he brought us from. Who we are is part of the traditions we've been given that have been handed down from generation to generation from mighty men of God. Men who spent hours in prayer, hours. And I'm not so vain to think that I'm more spiritual than they are. Just not. I don't have, I don't think I'm more spiritual than Billy Cole. I don't think I'm more spiritual than N.A. Urshan. I don't think I'm more spiritual than Brother Haney. I don't think I'm more spiritual than any of these guys. So guess what? I'm not, I know I'm not more spiritual than my pastor, my daddy. I know how much he prays and reads. And if he said it, I'm just going to go ahead and hold on to it. It turned out. Okay. I want you just to raise your hands. Like I said, I don't know how I'm going to close this. Just raise your hands. I wonder if you got, get my ribbon. I've got a gift. I want to give you these ribbons here. Just take them and start passing them out through there. 
Once, maybe you'll take it and wrap it around a keychain. Maybe you'll hang it on your fridge. And you'll remember it's not just, it's not just man-made laws, but the traditions are what secure and keep safe and uphold the commandments. Tonight, I want to pray over you. I feel like there's a love in this sanctuary. You know, some of you worry, oh, pastor, you're going to hurt our guests and they're going to, hey, look, I'm not stupid. I, don't, I ain't going to pre preach against all this stuff on Christmas Day. But, also, but I am going to preach against and stand for righteousness. And we need it. I want you to know something. You look around you on a Sunday night on July the 3rd. There's people in the balcony. It's packed out on July the 3rd. That means there's a whole lot of people at the lake, and that's fine. Take time with your family. I'm not bashing them. I'm saying, look how many people came on a holiday weekend. Hey, here's something I'd like. Do you mind just stepping back a little bit? If you've joined Eastgate Church and you've become a member, you won't be alone, so you, I'm not embarrassing you. Actually, I'm celebrating. But if you started coming to Eastgate in the last year, I want you just to come up around the front right now. If you can start over there and work your way around. Last year. You started coming in last year. Look at this. This is one year. This ain't two years. We'll get there. Come on, two-year people. One-year people. All right, look here. You say all people are going to be chased away. That's not true. There's a hunger in this last hour. If you've been coming in the last two years, I want you to come in behind them. If you would step up first years. Amen. It's two years. Hey, and welcome to the family, by the way. Welcome. There's some traditions we have, and they're grand, and you're going to love them. You'll, you'll learn them. We'll help you. I'll help you. These people ain't going to help you. And if they do, come tattle. Get their name. <laughs> say, so-and-so told me I couldn't wear this. You just say, well, what's your name? You come tell me. I'll take care of it. To your people come in. Look at this. Look at, now look around these gate. Now, this is on July 3rd. There's a whole lot at the lake. Three-year people. Any three-year people been here for three years? Y'all come up around here. Come on. Three-year people. Four-year people. Come on. Five-year people, come on. I'd almost say there's as many around this altar as there are out in them pews. These people are moving here, and you know why they're coming to Eastgate Church? Because they want. So Eastgate, this is why we're going to keep preaching truth. Yeah, there's going to be some that, that don't, and there's plenty of options and brands out there. But we're not going to be that option. We're going to be a church. We're going to love you. We're going to be balanced. On behalf of every member that sits out there right now, we want to welcome you guys to the Eastgate family. We're so thankful that you've chosen to be a part of the greatest thing going in the world. What I'd like now is for those that remain, if you would come. I want you to come around. And I'd like some of the elders to come. If you've been at this for longer than 20 years, and I know there's some up here that transferred in. You've been in church your whole life, and you just moved in California around, whatnot. I want you to come. But I'd like you all just to come up around the front and begin to pray. And I want us just to create a circle. Amen. And I want us to, I, I'm asking us right now, I feel the Holy Ghost inside of a young man and a young woman. I'm going to pray that a love for the truth and a love for the tradition. I want you to love the text, but young men, I want you to love the, when I get old, if the Lord tarries and I have no more hair and I'm sitting in a wheelchair, I don't want to go to a church that's let down the things that I love so much. I want you to get it in your heart. I want you to get it in your soul. I want you to fall in love with it. You say, preacher, you know, I moved and we did, it. I, look, that was there, this is here, this is how we're going to do it here. It's what works. It's the way it is. It's not going to change. We're not going to change it. It's in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years is how it's going to be. I make a promise to you this is how we're going to hold it this is what we're going to be we're going to be apostolic we're going to hold fast to the traditions given to us through word and epistle now I would come on brother Doak if you would brother Jim Pickering I want you to come hey amen come up and, and lay your hands I want you just to go through this crowd and begin to lay your hands come on brother Tim come on come up around there come on come on George Dearborn come on Josh Tazen come on come on come on that's it come on Bryce come on come on up here on this platform I want you to begin to pray 
Come on, begin to pray for him. Come on, Sister Ashley. Come on, that's it, Brother Noah. Brother Jacob, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lay your hands on him. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Come on, begin to pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want us you to begin to pray for unity of body, for love of truth, for love of holiness, for love of righteousness. Come on, it might be under attack in the world, but there's a place it's gonna stand. We'll take the arrows of the scoffer, but we're gonna stand, we're gonna hold fast. We're gonna hold fast. We're gonna cherish what makes the church the church. We're gonna celebrate what makes righteousness righteousness. God, I pray that you would fuse together. God, that you would graft graft together uh, the spirit father in this church uh, with those that have come uh, those that have joined from far and near uh, those that have converted recently uh, those father that have transitioned I pray uh, Lord right now in this very moment uh, God I rebuke the lie that says it takes extended periods of time uh, for people father to integrate and merge uh, and I just pray father in a moment uh, Lord there's not enough time at the end of time uh, for us to delay the grafting I pray that you would speed it up and allow Lord that merging to take place of heart of mind that common goal and common love for the things of God would get deep into the heart of every woman of God and man of God that they would love it that's it if you've been in this a while let him fill you with his spirit something deep down in you wants to groan something deep down in you wants to break through in the Holy Ghost Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
with eyes closed and hands lifted, Father, as we leave this house in just a moment, that there be a deep love and appreciation that rest upon us, a love for you and your commandments. Great peace have they which love thy laws, and great safety have those that cherish that tradition. And I pray that love would come and let it never leave. I bind the adversary that would bring any division. And I pray, Lord, that in your spirit and in your peace we could rest. Thank you, God, for your goodness and these wonderful people. I pray it all in the matchless name of Jesus. And together we say in Jesus' name. Why don't we just put our hands together and give him great praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the church. Thank God for truth. Amen. And thank God for those traditions. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Let them know how much you love them, how much you care. That's another tradition. We don't go home fast. We stay around. We love on each other. We tell each other how great they are and great they look and the devil's a liar and all that stuff. I love you.